Tonight there was to have been a coast-to-coast -coast celebration of American entertainment with the crowning of a national collegiate basketball champion here in Philadelphia. And the Academy Awards that were scheduled for later tonight in Los Angeles have been tempered considerably by the events of this afternoon in Washington, D.C. For those of you who may not have heard or may be tuning in late, there was an assassination attempt, an attempt on the life of President Reagan today in Washington. At 2.27 p.m. on March 30th, 1981, President Ronald Reagan had just finished a speaking engagement at the Washington Hilton Hotel in D.C. When he and his entourage exited the hotel toward his waiting limousine, six shots were fired. Four people were hit, including President Reagan. The final bullet ricocheted off the armored limo and struck the president in his chest under his left arm. He was rushed from the scene. The assailant, later identified as John Hinckley Jr., was tackled by Secret Service and taken into custody. Three persons were injured, uh, White House Press Secretary Jim Brady, uh, a Secret Service man identified as uh, Tim McCarthy, and a Washington policeman. Jim Brady still on the ground being tended to by emergency medical crews. Meanwhile, in Philadelphia, preparations were underway for the 1981 NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. That was the day of the national championship game between the Hoosiers of Indiana and the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Everybody in the country was a basketball fan was excited for that particular day. Uh, I remember that everything that morning was going fine and then all of a sudden, before we leave to go to the arena, we hear about President Reagan being shot. Well, I remember, obviously, it's the day of the uh, national championship game. We weren't sitting around watching television at that time, and so we didn't know that the president had been shot. We had just finished a pregame meal, and a lot of us would uh, kind of sit around and watch the soap operas. And um, they said, you know, we interrupt this program. The president's been shot. President Reagan was the target uh, of an assassination attempt. The first question was, how severe is the situation that we're talking about? Is President Reagan going to be OK? And at that point in time, uh, no one really knew. As a member of the media, we're just waiting. We did. We had no idea what was going to happen. I mean, we're down at the spectrum. The, the Final Four just started to become a really big deal after the Magic Bird game in 79, and this was going to be a fairly big game. Not only was it a battle between two talented teams, the Indiana Hoosiers and the North Carolina Tar Heels, it was a matchup of legendary coaches, Dean Smith, and Bobby Knight. The satisfaction with this team uh, has come through watching it grow and develop. There were reports about, you know, if the game would be played or not, but Coach pretty much uh, kept us focused on the game is going to be played. You know, I'm going through my um, rituals, you know, before the game, and then you just hear about it while stretching or hear about somebody, somebody's talking on the sideline with the reporters, you know, they're coming up to you and telling you that the game would have been canceled. How would you feel? You have to get your mind in what I call the ready state to play the game. I think both teams were really ready to play, so we were not thinking that that will not be a ball game. We were thinking that we are going to play, and we were prepared to play. We're here at uh, right across the street from George Washington Hospital. The President of the United States is in the hospital. And then we learned, I think it was around 4.04 .04 p.m., that President Reagan had gone in for surgery. We didn't know if that was you know, good or bad. The biggest thing I remember is there was just, you could hear the whispers going all around, like, well, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What are we going to do? And one of the tournament committee members came down and got Coach Smith and Coach Knight. In order to cancel a game, you have to have a vote of the um, head of the selection committee, whatever NCAA officials are on the scene, the athletic director and the president of both schools. We assigned uh, Dave Gavitt to get the two coaches and visit with them, explain the news that we had heard. But ironically, they ended up having a discussion in a utility closet somewhere in the spectrum, uh, the nearest private place that they could find. There was a lot of talk about whether they should play the game. There was a lot of talk about uh, the president's physical condition. It's one of the few times I've actually been in a national championship game where your mind isn't totally on basketball. Uh, there was a doctor, like a faculty representative at the uh, University of North Carolina, Dr. Wilcox. Ben Wilcox, who was a thoracic surgeon, and he was monitoring the situation with Dr. Ben Aaron, who did the surgery. And I don't think that they made a determination until 
two hours later that the president was out of danger. So it was about 7 o'clock that uh, we'd received word that was promising and encouraging. In fact, uh, President Reagan apparently used uh, W.C. Fields' comment about, all in all, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. Well, that was a marvelous message from, the, from President Reagan, and we thought we may be, we may be okay. And I think th that almost gave people a feeling that he wanted the games to go on. That day, you know, it was very turbulent. Uh, you know, we all said a prayer, but, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, we, we stayed focused on there was going to be a game. We pretty much knew we were going to play a ball game, so there was not a lot of discussion about what had happened to the president. He was in good, stable condition were the words, as I recall. And once we received that, then we decided it's uh, full steam ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention for just a moment. The National Collegiate Athletic Association wants you to know that the condition of President Reagan is reported as good. He is out of surgery, and the prognosis for a complete recovery is excellent. Once the game started, um, we knew we had to weather the first wave. Carolina always got out to a good start. They always played well with their first five. Inside, Perkins. Oh, a nice dish off, and Al Wood scores. And we got off to a fairly good start, and then uh, same official called two ridiculous fouls on James Worthy. I remember that part very clearly. What's happening here, the officials are trying to blow a quick whistle to show they're governing the game. They will not let this game get out of hand. It was going back and forth. And I think it was uh, Whitman hit a long jump shot right before halftime. I'm just trying to milk some clock and make sure that we get the last shot. And I know Whitman's in his favorite spot. Hit Whitman. Whitman makes a shot. Go in. We are one at the half. Whitman at the buzzer. Indiana leads 27-26. You felt like the even though we had been ahead, you felt like, hey, we got to be careful. They're getting the momentum right here. And then in the second half, uh, I think Isaiah just got to be more dominating and more dominating, more comfortable playing against our pressure. And he was clearly the most dominating player in the game. And a steal, Isaiah Thomas against Black. Indiana wins the game 63-50. Isaiah Thomas has a huge game. He gets 19 of 23 in the second half uh, and really establishes himself as one of those special players. I remember jumping around out on the floor, us hugging each other, and it was a beautiful team moment that I don't think any of us will ever forget. Perhaps the fact that this game was even played is the best news we have had tonight, because for a time tonight, it appeared the game would not be played. I think they probably made the right decision. Had they not known uh, until later that night, I don't think I would have played the game. But I think once he was in the clear, they opted to do it. I couldn't be more uh, complimentary or uh, appreciative of the manner in which the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Committee uh, reacted to the news when we first received it at 2.30 that afternoon. The committee was determined to be very deliberate and to make the very best decision it could based on the information that was available. It just ended up being like a great day. Uh, we won and the president was alive and, you know, my mom was there.